good. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not a small group. I wish everybody on this side would sit over there. So when she ministers, she'll be, she can focus on one group. Amen. Amen. Uh, Tawana, you can still sit there. You're going to dance. Amen. So, amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, welcome to Sword of Spirit Power Ministries. Give the Lord a hand. Praise. <laughs> amen. I'm excited for God going to do. It's not about the numbers. Amen. It's about Him. Amen. And He's definitely here. His presence is here. I'm very honored to have my sister, Mary Crawley. We made friends in Israel. Amen. We're working together. Um, with the army of the Lord and I work with her and what she's doing, the vision God has given her. And we honored to have her tonight. So I'm gonna start the program to get the spirit so she can step into uh, the presence and God going to use her, amen. amen. So uh, I'm gonna call my spiritual daughter up first, the praise dancer, amen. amen. Come forward, amen. Give a hand for you, she come forward, come up here. Amen. Amen. And we're going to start, then another spirit that going to sing a song, then one more dance, and then we call up the speaker of the hour, amen. So give a hand, praise. Amen. Amen. amen.
everybody in praise. Amen. <laughs> Another one of my spiritual dolls come back and this selection. Yeah. Mr. Paulette Green, give a hand praise. Amen. <laughs> Another one This young lady is special to me. She, she's the only one that can minister before I get up. She opens up the spiritual realm. And she's, uh, the Lord told her, call her a warrior princess. Amen. She's been with me a long time. And she knows how to go in and open it up. How to step behind it. So. The woman that God will be able to step behind this anointing coming now. Amen. I present to you the warrior princess. 
Amen. Minister Tawana World. She comes in the long way. Amen. Give another hand, praise.
Thank you, Jesus. The plans I have. See, you just need to remember that I know. You can't figure it out, because I know. here because God there's something over the city of Los Angeles California that you're getting ready to release it's not just what we are it's not what it's not who we are it's who you are and under the directives of the Lord 
Lord God, with the sword of the Lord and the sword of the Spirit Ministries, Mary Carly Ministries, and all the people in here that represent keys, we thank you, Lord God, that there's going to be a release in the atmosphere over the city of angels that is going to bring forth this coming thing that's here now today. And I thank you, Lord, for this charge that I'm going to give first. It's not about any of us. You could use a donkey if you had to. The issue is it's time for the earth to give birth. And we thank you for the 7 billion people on this planet who there's a greater anointing move of God than Azusa Street, the Jesus movement, and all of them combined. We thank you that tonight you're going to ignite and light with the good fight something over the city of angels. For yes. such a time as this have you called us to the kingdom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Yeah, can you, can you move it up just to... A tad. Oh, thanks. Well, anyway, thank you, Apostle Barnett and um, everyone that's here. And, you know, I know Pastor Barnett was telling me that your service didn't get out till 4.30 today, uh, a lot of the people. And it's interesting, I had, uh, you know, Pastor Barnett, Apostle Barnett, that came to, to the ministry, our ministry, on, on uh, July 19th. And there wasn't a lot of black people there, too. You guys had your whole crew with you. So it's kind of like God's doing cross-pollination that's getting ready to happen in this nation. Okay, really quickly, I brought a few things with me in the back. Uh, I didn't bring them all up here, but uh, if I don't talk about it, people don't know. We have a special. It's a sale. How many of you guys like sales? Well, normally everything's 15, but tonight if you get three, everything's going to be 10. But you have to get three. Otherwise, it's, it's, if you just get one, it's still 15. So this book, God Have Me Write, When God Speaks, it tells the whole call into the ministry. It tells a lot of stories, but it teaches along with it. And it just shows you we all have a journey. It, a lot of people can read this book in literally a couple hours because it's easy to read, and it inspires you to really go higher when the Lord take, tells you to go. We're only going where God has told us to go. That's all I'm doing. Amen. So I don't have the faith to fight for something he hasn't told me to do. So all I can tell you is the book is very ins inspirational, uh, just because the Lord told me to write it. How, uh, possessing God's promises through perseverance. How many of you have gone through some trials? Let me see your hands. Do you know that the Lord said, because in Revelation, because you obeyed my command to persevere, the Lord gave me that word, the, the, the command to persevere, he's going to make you a pillar. You know, God allows us to go through things. So this talks about the stories of Joan of Arc, and it talks about how God chose a, a, a teenage girl to win the nation of France. She didn't even know how to read or write. Great story, possessing God's promises to perseverance. Uh, revival, the Great Awakening. It talks about the Jesus Movement, the Hebrides Revival, the Azusa Street Revival. It talks about it, a lot of the revivals. Every single revival has always come through prevailing prayer. And there's many more things back there, but the, the ladies are back there, and they'll help you at the end. So, so Lord, I want to get on with the message, because it's not going to be a long message, but God showed me that there's something that's being released tonight over the city of Los Angeles. And God is so proud of all of you and Apostle Barnett, because I feel, now I feel a different anointing coming on me. It's almost a charge that God is getting ready to give to you. The Lord says, in fact, he says, I know the plans that I have for you and their plans, the Lord said, to prosper you. He said the city of Los Angeles is a city now that is going to be the city of angels. That tonight, the Lord says, I'm going to take down the quadrants. I've already taken down the west side, the east side. Tonight, the Lord said, the north side and the south side, I'm getting ready to bring down the principalities over this town. And I'm getting ready to crown this town. When the Los Angeles Kings won the Stanley Cup, the Lord said it was a sign that I'm going to call in you kings. You are going to see, Apostle Barnett, that the years that you have spent in sacrifice and service, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God said, now with the sword of the Lord tonight, the Lord said, you're going to make this town right. The Lord said, with black and white, the Lord said, red and brown, it's time now to crown this town. And the enemy, the principalities, over the regions are coming down. Now the Lord said, this is not Mary, it's speaking to me, but I use human beings, of course you see, 
So now it's time to set the captives free. And I'm getting ready to bring a dream team. A dream team. And God said, it's going to be a scream team when you see what the Lord's going to do. <laughs> God said, it's going to be the greatest show on earth, Apostle Barnett. And the Lord said, it's time to cast your net. Because you've been saying we've been fishing all night and caught nothing. It looks pretty light. But God's saying that he's getting ready to ignite, ignite, ignite. So on with the charge. Because you see, heaven is watching. The stadiums of heaven are full tonight. The Lord said, I never move in movements beginning with large things. I always start the small things. That's why I always tell you, despise not the day of small beginnings. So the Lord said, it's time to play ball. It's time to answer the call. Come one, come y'all to the ball of the call. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, as I give them the play. The power play. The great movement is at hand. We thank you, God, for the, the power plays of God that are getting ready to come into place in the city of Los Angeles. And I thank you for articulating this charge the way you wanted to, not too long, not too short. But Lord, then you then you're still giving it to me play by play. So but I know something is gonna happen on this day. And that we're gonna walk in your way and say what you say. And we're going to see the greatest show on earth start in this town, the town of Los Angeles. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay. God, how many of you know that things are starting to move really quickly? Let me see your hands. There's an acceleration coming down, and I'm going to give you just some things that the Lord has happened. And for the history's sake, for the record, I'm going to bring forth... Uh, what God wants for this time in history. A great movement is at, on at hand. Last Labor Day, I woke up on Labor Day, and the Lord, I heard his voice. The first thing he said to me was, it's time for the earth to give birth. It was Labor Day. God is wanting a new harvest to come in. So get ready, he said, on your market set, go. It's time for the show, it's time for the dough, and it's time for the flow. Because we're going to need the money to do what God has called us to. I want us to turn an opening to Malachi 4. Most of you all know this, this, um, this scripture, but all I can tell you is that I always open with a word. Malachi 4, 4. Remember you, the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded to him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The Lord told me in 1996, he spoke to me when I was down in San Diego, California, and I was speaking in a woman's group, and he said, I want you to start ministering to the youth again. The Lord's not going to have me go into long detail about, I'm just going to give you really short recaps. All I can tell, I got a group of people together, we started praying about where and all I can tell you, the Lord said, you got to keep this really short. <laughs> because each one of these stories could run really long, and the door doesn't want it to run long. It's not about the length of time. What happened was, one day I was driving home from the gym, and I heard the Lord said, there's a greater move of God coming than in the Jesus movement. And he said, I want you to do a concert and call it Youth Wave, and the slogan is, be a part of the new wave. The very first Youth Wave, there was a lot of work getting it done, but it was on Rosh Hashanah, in 1996. It had been canceled. It was supposed to have been the night before. But what happened was, there were, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, they, they canceled it and we had to move it. And it was at the Anaheim Vineyard we moved it to. There was 5,000 people that came to that place. And over 500 people came down to give their, their hearts to the Lord. The Lord did something. Since then, youth wave explosion was birthed. We've done about 10 large outreach concerts. The second one, we went down to San Diego, open air theater at the San Diego State um, University. The third one, we did at the Oceanside Amphitheater. We did one at Calvary Chapel. I went to Compton, Jackie Robinson Stadium. We went to the military base in Camp Pendleton, the fairgrounds. All I can tell you, it was taking back the bases. It was taking back what the enemy had tried to steal. We were redeeming the time and redeeming the land. And so, 
So now, when the Lord told me that about the Jesus movement, I said, what is the Jesus movement? I didn't know what it was. One day, at my church down at the vineyard in Laguna Negra, my pastor had invited several of us women to come and just um, come together to pray. I asked him what the Jesus movement was, and he told me. In 1967, there was a hippie on a mountain named Lonnie Frisbee who dropped LSD, and he looked up and he cried out to God, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Only for the canyon and the atmosphere started to change and shift. And he said, oh, oh, I didn't want to be there. And then he saw a vision of the Pacific Ocean, but instead of being filled with water, it was filled with people. And they were up in darkness. And the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm putting a light on you to reach lost people. At the same time, there was a man named Chuck Smith who for 17 years had been pastoring a small little church in Costa Mesa, California. And he was thinking of quitting. And him and his wife, Kay, used to go down to Laguna Beach and watch all these hippies lining the streets. And he'd shake his middle-aged bald head and he goes, dirty hippies wanted to take a bath. And his wife, Kay, the heart of a mother, said, Chuck, don't say that. We gotta pray that God's gonna reach these kids. Despise not the days of small beginnings, Apostle Barnett, because the Lord purposely has kept many of you hidden, us hidden, for this time. When you become big, you become a target. The Lord births things in small places because he wants to get the glory for the story. Amen. And so what happened, Chuck told his kids, if you ever see a hippie, bring one home. Because he heard about what was going up in San Francisco. And so Lonnie went up to San Francisco. All I can tell you, it was Haight-Ashbury, the summer of love. An explosion happened in San Francisco. Only this wasn't really a godly explosion initially. It was an explosion where sex, drugs, and rock and roll came in 1967 in the summer of love. Lonnie came down, hitchhiking by the Orange County Fairgrounds. Chuck Smith's daughter's boyfriend picked him up, brought him home to meet Chuck. The rest is history. This tiny little guy that God touched and empowered literally started going to the church with his wife, Connie, only for it to explode into a movement. So many hippies started coming to the church to listen to him preach on Wednesday night, where Chuck taught on Monday night and Sunday. But they started doing mass baptisms in Corona Del Mar at Pirate's Cove. For Time Magazine started covering it, calling the Jesus Movement. They made Jesus Man of the Year in 1971 and exploded where thousands and thousands of people. This tiny little church of 40 people exploded within two months. There was two to 3,000 people and the news media was covering it and that's how it grew. It grew through the media. So what I'm telling all of you, despise not the days of small beginnings. God is doing something new. It's going to happen quickly. In 1967, when this happened with Lonnie, it was the tetrad. There was the four blood moons. It was important because 1967, Jerusalem was taken back. You know what I mean? They reclaimed Jerusalem. What's happening right now, it started at Passover, another tetrad, four blood moons. With what's happening with Israel, we're in a war. The enemy's trying to accelerate the Battle of Armageddon for coming, but we're pushing it back because there's time that we need to see the harvest of souls come in. And the Lord told me that this, I, he told me to do a movie about Lonnie Frisbee. And he said that this movie, Randy Frakes, the writer of the, of the uh, can I move around with this thing? It's just, sometimes when I move, it, it kind of, it kind of, it sounds like the sound comes out. That's why I like to move. I don't like to stay stationary. Hey guys, hey Carlos, hey guys, good to see you. So I can see you better. Yeah, so you guys are all important. It's very important that, that what was happening here, because I'm just a cheerleader. That's what I am. And I'm here because God told me to come. And Apostle Barnett and I are going to be doing things in the future as the Lord directs. But this is the thing. He's calling you tonight. He's calling. There's something that's going to be big that's going to happen here tonight. And it doesn't take, there's not a lot of the men here. Thank God for the mighty men up here. I salute you. But when God wants to get something done, all, all, sometimes he calls the women to come. The mighty women. Bill Fowler, my friend, here will tell you. But let me tell you guys that everything is getting ready to shift and change. Suddenly things are going to start happening quickly. When I asked 
my pastor at How the Jesus Movement started, he started talking about Lonnie Frisbee. Something inside of me stirred that I was going to be doing. Uh, I, I was going to be doing uh, <laughs> something about the Jesus Movement on my TV show. And so one day I get an invitation to go see the documentary on Lonnie Frisbee. Only after the four part, we did a four part taping. You know, I did a four part show. As I'm driving home. I get a call from my editor director and he says, listen, there needs to be a movie about this. And it started rolling, rolling, rolling. But how many of you know it hasn't been easy? Let me see how many of you have been through battles. <laughs> well, all I could, I did not realize it was going to be eight years, four writers, you know what I mean? Going through the middle of a lot of challenges, three scripts, when all of a sudden I had to put it on the altar. What are you going through today? that you're having to put on the altar, depth of a vision. I'm sensing a lot of you are going through depth of a vision. God gives you the birth, all of a sudden it's a death. But God's getting you ready to breathe upon that vision, Carlos, Bill, all of you that are in here. And so this is the thing. i got to keep track of my notes because he wants me to start going faster. He does. I have to keep, keep up. Doing the, the middle of depth of a vision, the hardest time of my life, that's when typically God will speak to you. And he woke me up. It was April 4th at 4.20. On my clock, it was not a digital clock, it was 4, it was um, 4.20, 4.2. And I heard him say, you're crossing over a threshold on green lighting the movie. And I heard God speak to me that God green-lighted it. And what green-light means in Hollywood, it means it's, it's set to go into production. That was 2011. And then I heard him say, everybody thought 40 years after 1967, they had a big anniversary of the Jesus movement, 40 years up in San Francisco. The Lord said, 44, this is the 44 years since the Jesus movement. He said, and this is the real big summer of love. Because he said, Lonnie Frisbee was born on June 6, 1949, but June 6, 1944 was D-Day. D-Day, where they stormed the beaches of Normandy in 1944 against what Hitler was doing. This is D-Day. Something's getting ready to happen, 44. But do you know what else happened on April 4, 1968? Martin Luther King was assassinated. April 4th. 1968. I'm telling you guys, God is getting ready to do something and it's happening quickly. And so what happened? The Lord basically showed me how to raise the money for the movie. A week later, we had the first Frisbee event. Enough money came in to hire Randy. And now we have the script. Because we're too legit to quit. <laughs> we're too legit to quit. That's why I talk about perseverance. The Lord says you will reap if you don't quit. Right. Many of you have quit on your dreams, and you're too legit to quit. You cannot quit unless the Lord tells you to, to what he says. So now, this is the day of deliverance in Isaiah 66, 9. If you want to turn to it, you can. It says, do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery or bring to birth? No. Isaiah 60. He says, Arise and shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen among you. The army of the Lord is rising up. I had Apostle Barnett and his crew come on July 19th. It was a powerful event. You know, you brought, there was about 50 of your people there, I think. 40 or 50 of the people. The mighty men came in with the swords, and God did something in the spirit. Only a week later, I did the day of the Lord. You know, on July 26th. Now, this is where I'm, I'm get, getting ready to talk about history. This is not about us. It's for the city of angels. July 26th, Tim and Deborah was there, and Pam and Jill and Yvonne. There were some of you guys were here. There was about 50 of us, and it was more of a day meeting. But the Lord had me talk about Amy Simple McPherson, and he had me talk about William Seymour and how hard it's been. For them. A lot of the people think, well, if it's so hard. The Lord told us, this is why I liked what you guys had to say, endure hardness as a good soldier. The Lord never said it was going to be easy. He said he'd never leave you. Yes. We've been getting a lot of tickling ear messages about people just saying, well, you know, just try to. We, 
if you're going into war, when I did the Camp Pendleton uh, Youth Way, we called it uh, Salute to Heroes, these guys, the war, Iraq war hadn't started. It was 2004. They were getting prepared. The concert had gotten canceled. It was supposed to be in the big uh, field. They canceled it, and one of my friends said, let's go to the School of Infantry. Infantry, where the guys are trained for the front lines of war. We have been in the infantry, you guys. Some of you have been going through the tests. How many of you have been going through tests? Let me see your... I'm telling you, we've been going through these series of severe tests because God wants to know who, who can go all the way, who's willing to go all the way. And why he had me bring it down here is because the Lord said, I'm leveling the playing field. And he's bringing forth a dream team. And a lot of people have been disqualified or cut from the team. It's not like they're going, not going to heaven, but they disqualify because they gave up and left. But you guys are too legit to quit because I'm telling you, this stuff is getting ready to happen quickly. Amy Simple McPherson, when she was 17 years old, she got she ended up getting receiving the Lord, got married to Robert Simple, go over to Hong Kong. I'm not gonna the Lord's saying do it quick. Hong Kong, her husband and her contracted malaria to have her husband die when she was eight months pregnant, overseas with no money. How would you guys like to be her? She comes back, the Lord miraculously sends money. She comes back, she ends up marrying a guy, you know, I think Howard McPherson, starts being a housewife, homemaker, whatever. She knew the call in her life to preach. Bill knows a lot of this story. All I can tell you, she got so sick, they actually, she was in a hospital infirmary where they leave people to die, and the Lord said, will you go? Will you go to her? That's what he said. And she, you know, she didn't say, well, I'm married. I'm a woman. I can't preach. This was in the days women couldn't even vote. And God called her. This is what I'm saying. I feel the heart of God right now. That many women, God is going to start raising you up because the men, and I love men. I'm not trying to be here to bash men day. I'm really not. All I can say is, Catherine Coleman said two men were supposed to have done her ministry. But they didn't, so God gave it to her. Yeah. Doug Addison about the Lonnie Frisbee movie said two men were supposed to have done the movie, they didn't, so God gave it to me. There comes a point if somebody won't do what God told them to do, God will find someone else. Amen. And so God is looking to and fro. Amy, finally, God said, will you go? She said yes. God told her, you need to leave your husband, get in your car, and take your two kids and start evangelizing. He came home from work one day at night shift, and all of a sudden he sees a note saying, I've gone to preach. <laughs> Two weeks later, she sends him an invitation to come join her, and he did. See, in the natural realm, this sounds very, well, that doesn't sound like God. But I'm telling you, God shows her. He told her what to do, and her husband came and followed her, and literally for three years was with her, helping her, until he decided he, did, he had enough of it and abandoned her and went back to Rhode Island and filed for divorce under uh, the because of abandonment. Amy had to literally go cross country in a gospel car with her two little children in a tent at night sleeping and going from town to town to town to town. What I'm saying is it was during the time that people, as I said, they could women couldn't even vote. She they, they were saying that she had she could have to fish, learn how to fish. You know, all this stuff. The rain, there was holes in the tent. She used to put the umbrella over the children, tell them little bed stories. She didn't get discouraged or bitter because she knew God had called her to do what she was called to do. She finally comes to Los Angeles, and she builds, God tells her to build an Angeles temple. It took seven years to build. In those seven years' time, 40 million people came through Angeles Temple. She got kidnapped really right above on the west side, right above Venice Beach. Some people, there was a big scandal, but she really did get kidnapped. Bill can even tell you that he's talked to people that were in the museum that know that she was kidnapped. She was with some other women. They went to get something to drink or something. A couple comes up, says, we have a baby in the car that's sick. Can you come pray for the baby? Only for them to put chloroform over her mouth and take her away into Mexico. She eventually escaped and walked 13 miles, and they, you know, she, it, was, it was an incredible thing. When she came back to Los Angeles, flew back, there was 30,000 people waiting for her. 
God touched this woman only for her to die in 1944 of an accidental overdose. She's up in Oakland, California. This coming September 27th, which is Rosh Hashanah, will be the 70 year anniversary of Amy Simple McPherson's death. 70 years was how long the children of Israel were in Babylon when the Lord released them. Something is getting ready to happen. It's time for the earth to give birth. William Seymour was called by God as a one-eyed black man, son of, of, of slaves. This man was so used by God, I mean, he didn't get offended because he couldn't sit inside the, the, the room with the, with the white people. He had to sit outside the door to listen. God finally called him, a woman called him up to Los Angeles. He comes to preach, and, long, and he's, he's preaching a message, but he's talking about believing for the power of God to come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That night he goes back, and they padlocked him out of the church. He's homeless, broke, doesn't know where to go. He finally, someone tells him about the Bonnie Bray house. He goes there and now he's fasting and praying for revival. Where are you at today, people? Where does it seem, are you in a place that seems like all hell's breaking loose? Well, let me tell you, on Bellflower, California, tonight, God's getting ready to bring down the house. Amen. This is the devil's house. Not just because of us, it's because this is for the record, it's what God's doing. Yeah. And so now, William Seymour, there's so many, it was actually an Asian man named Lee. What was his first name, Bill? Do you remember? The, his name was Lee. It was the Chinese guy that ended up getting the baptism first. Sister Soul told me this. I went to, Sister Soul runs the uh, Bonnie Bray House. All I can say was that she said Mr. Lee was sleeping and she had a dream that the Apostle Peter put his hands on his head and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Wow. He woke up speaking in tongues and then he goes over to the Bonnie Bray house and, and then tells what happened and then William Seymour got tongues and all of them. So many people in the neighborhood started coming around. Basically the whole porch ended up getting, uh, because there were so many people that it, it totally collapsed. The police came and they said, you got to find a building. You gotta, can't do, do this anymore. He found a building. Uh, was it a three-story building, Bill? Yeah. But it, was a, it had been a building, but they made the bottom floor into a um, stable. And he found that building. God said, this is the place. And so then this is the story I love. Bill knows the story, too. These are the times during the Jim Crow laws where a black man couldn't be out after dark. And he couldn't be in certain white neighborhood, in neighborhoods. Bill said they were hanging black men what, in, in Hancock Park? It's down from Central Park. It was Arroyo Seca. He was where? Arroyo Seca Park. It's down from Central Park off of Fair Oaks. Okay, Fair Oaks. They were hanging men in that park in 1905, whatever, 1906. So let me tell you, the Lord tells him to get on the bus and to draw, to go to Pasadena. During, after dark, I mean, literally, he's giving his, his, his whole life is in jeopardy. There had been a group of young people. Bill, come up here a minute. I feel the Lord wants, I'm just going to interview you a little bit. There was a group of young people. What was the, what, I'll just hold the mic. What was the, um, the girl's name? Sister Carney. It was uh, Frank Barlman's house of prayer in Pasadena. Sister Carney was like 18 years old. She'd already been baptized in the Holy Spirit and was speaking in tongues. But there were eight uh, young women in that house that night when William Seymour was led there supernaturally and as knocked on the door, asked, is there a prayer meeting here? And they said, yeah, we're praying for the greatest outpouring in history. And uh, he said- yeah, Frank Barlman, tell about that. Frank Barlman, uh, those are long stories, but uh, you know he's uh, gave birth. I believe he was partnered with uh, Charles Parham and William Seymour. You know that was a team effort. That wasn't just one one man. But some of that was even connected to the Wales revival in 1904. Uh, it was fire was you know catching mm -hmm. and tra transforming, moving. And right. But see, Frank Bartleman was an was a complication. And he, he'd been plowing the way for, what, two or three years? Way more than that. Uh, he was a genuine revivalist. He was given over to intercession and 
fasting and praying. And he, he traveled. He was a, a man on the street. He, he loved to minister to homeless and prostitutes and the least, the dregs of society. He lived that all over the world. It's okay. incredible. Okay, well thanks, thanks Phil. I just wanted that, so here, there's eight young women, I think there might have been a couple, I don't know the ages, but a lot of them, there was eight women, and they were praying for the greatest outpouring of God. God sends William Seymour on a bus, told them where to go, get off here, go down the street, knock on the door, and can you imagine 1905, 1906, yeah. an African American man knocking on your door in a white neighborhood, I mean, would you open up the door now if you didn't know the guy at, at whatever time at night, nine or 10? I don't think so. All of a sudden he goes, are you praying for revival? And they said yes, and he said, well, I'm the man that God sent. And he came in and he preached about the move of God and what was happening down at the Bonnie Bray House and about the Zusa Street building they found. And they took an offering, it was the exact amount of money they needed to get the Azusa Street building. And so what I'm saying is the news media it was what blew up the Azusa Street movement because the newspapers see God always uses the media. That's why this next wave is going to be, a, one of the ways is going to be a media wave. And so it basically 520 million people to this day attribute their roots back to the Azusa Street outpouring. But it was very, very difficult for, for him. And later the whole thing, you know, somebody got a hold of his mailing list and moved. It was, didn't end well. But see, God wanted it to be birth. And it was birth and around the world it went. And so now we're going to keep on moving. This is just for the record. I talked that day on July 26 about William Seymour and Amy Simple McPherson. Some of you were here, there. And so that was just a week ago. A week ago and a day, eight days ago. So what happened was that we did a commissioning service, and there was two men, two pastors, and Marianne Flynn and me and another woman, there was three women and two men, and each one walked up, we commissioned them, we commissioned them, and then at the end we were all in a circle around the, inside the building, it was about the size of this, and at 2.50 in the afternoon, the Lord basically gave a prophetic word that something was happening over the city of Los Angeles, and we shouted, and then I don't remember exactly, Tim and Deborah were there, and so, but all I know is at three o'clock it ended, and everybody had a voice, the thing went around the room, and then it ended. So now this is where it gets really weird, and this is where it's gonna start picking up the pace. I was just doing this stuff just for the record. So now, the next day, I'm in my apartment in Marina Del Rey. Randy, the writer of the movie, uh, the story, Johnny Frisbee, Karen and myself were watching a documentary about something, and all of a sudden, we heard this, I mean, it was, I thought a bomb dropped. And what it was, it was thunder and lightning in Marina Del Rey in Venice that rolled in so quickly. I mean, it was funny. I mean, all of a sudden, we, I heard this thing. Karen thought a bomb had, I mean, had a, a plane crashed. It was that loud. We later found out that lightning had struck Venice Beach Pier. And there was people in the water, 13 people had to go to the hospital, and one guy literally drowned it. They resuscitated him for a short time, took him to Marina Del Rey Hospital where he died. Now this wasn't God was doing it, but all of a sudden the Lord spoke to me, he said, I took down a principality over the west side. He said it's a west side story. Now I'm gonna bring my glory. I've talked to pastors because I've done meetings at Dr. Obaniah's church in Venice, and we've, I've had Henry Grace Fellini, the God, Gold, and Glory people. I've had Gershom. I've done meetings there. And the pastors, when I've gone to meet with pastors, they've told me there's never been a move of God on the west side. Mm -hmm. In fact, I told you Amy was on the west side, right above Venice when she was kidnapped. So now, the next morning on Monday, I wake up and God says to me, the enemy has had you in frivolous lawsuits in the courts of heaven trying to stop and delay what God has called you to do, but the Lord says, today you're acquitted. Amen. And I went, I went. This isn't just for me, this stuff is happening for all of us. So now I hear the Lord say that. So the next day, I'm driving down to the prayer meeting in Laguna Niguel that I've had for this November, it'll be 10 years. That we have been praying in Laguna Niguel for 10 years we started on the, the election, 
uh, with bu the Bush election, and uh, all I can tell you is there's been anywhere from five to 50 people coming. Carlos has been there, a lot of guys have been there. But so now the Lord tells me, he says to me, there's four quadrants over the city of Los Angeles, north, south, east, and the west. I'm getting this play by play, the directives of God. And of course, prophecy has to be tested. Don't get me wrong, but listen, you know, the, with these signs and wonders happening, I mean, we know that God's doing something. So all of a sudden, the Lord said, tonight, you're going to have the authority to take down the East Gate, which was Pasadena and that area over there. So, you know, I don't try to go after principalities and powers that I have no authority. Have you, I mean, you don't try to do that because, you know what, you'll get into some big trouble. But when God tells you to, because I've been all over the world and there's certain places with portals that have opened up in Jerusalem, at the Jordan River, Moravian Falls, and Scotland, in Israel, at different places, Takwas going up there, that God said one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When you take some new land and he gives you the authority to go to the next step, the next step, the next right. step. Amen. So now, the Lord said, the gates over the north and the south, the last two, it's like bases. He said, first, I mean, first, second, third, and home. So really, what Venice and the west side represented was third. What the east gate represented was first base. But what we're getting ready to take down is second base and home. And the Lord told me that it's ready for the grand slam, that God's getting ready to bring the church out of the dugout we're going to get in new uniforms. We're getting ready to get on base. And the power hitters are going to come to do the power plays. And all the world is going to see, and heaven's going to do the wave. They're all going to go, woo, woo. And so, and so now, like I'm coming, I'm rounding uh, second base right now. I'm halfway home. This is, OK. Like, do you know when that lightning hit in Venice Beach, it was at 2.50 in the afternoon, literally 24 hours wow. from the time that we all prayed and shouted. It was 24 hours, and the Lord said that what we did in that place, now there's a lot of people praying, so we know it's not just us, but when you get a group of people in unity like that, yeah. and when you do that, in telling you it's, it brings something, something happens. 2.50, so now, um, Okay, so now another thing that happened on Tuesday, this is wild, and you guys probably heard about this. Tuesday, a 30-inch, nearly century-old pipe burst under Sunset Boulevard on Tuesday, July 29th, sending water 30 feet in the air, opening a 15-foot hole in the street, 35,000 gallons a minute of water. 8 million gallons of water was released. Yeah. And the main place it hit was UCLA. Yeah. And, it, and it hit the athletics department. I studied this stuff today because God was giving it to me play by play. It hit the newly renovated John Wooden um, basketball yeah. court. And it hit the athletics department where they keep all the trophies. What God is saying to me tonight, that God is getting ready to bring some of the biggest power play hitters the greatest trophies of God are getting ready to be released for this end time movement of the Lord. And the Lord is saying that you guys are too legit to quit because you've gone through many battles. Many of you have almost despaired even of life. But now is the time that he's getting ready to raise up the dream team. You know, when the L.A. Lakers, you know, they were had superstars on their team like Shaq O'Neal and Kobe Bryant and Rick Fox and all these people, but they couldn't win games until their coach, that Phil Jackson, came. And he taught them how to play together, how to throw the ball. You don't always have the shot. Give it to the other guy. And they started winning. This is what God's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to put us on base. We, we don't need to play. We're not playing against each other. We're playing together. It's one thing, you know, you don't have to be the superstar. In fact, God gives more honor to the parts that aren't seen. Who wants to be the liver? It's like, oh, let me be the liver. No, it's like everyone wants to be an eye or a hand. But you can live without an eye. You can't live without a liver. You can't live without some of the, the, the parts that are unseen. You can't live with the, re the reproductive system is the thing that bursts in the moment. The intercessors, the ones that people think, oh, they're just intercessors. Well, they're just intercessors. 
No, the intercessors are some of the most powerful, most po the reproductive system in the body is what's going to bring forth this deal. The birthing mothers and fathers who have birthed the movement through prayer and fasting. And so now, there was a drought. You know, it's the worst drought in the history of Los Angeles. And here now, the flood, it's a sign. There's something getting ready to go down. I have a reality show, Apostle, that the Lord told me to do this show. And I normally don't tell what it's called, but it doesn't matter because it's under the blood of Jesus. Four years ago, the Lord told me, and he said one day, do you want to know the name of the show? And I said, yeah, what's the name? And he goes, Streetwalkers. And I go, they're going to think we're hookers. <laughs> and he said, exactly. <laughs> Holy hip hookers that are going to go into the streets of Los Angeles with the power of God. We got a sizzle reel done. And I'm taking this to networks. We're getting ready. I'm telling you guys, the, the God is tired of the Kardashians and the OC Housewives and all these different shows yeah. that just show flesh and nothing else. And God's getting ready to bring the street walkers. Yeah. And it's not just us. I mean, it's to show the world the power. We got healings. We got deliverances. We've got, and it's done creatively and righteously, but cool and hip and holy. And so this morning as I was getting ready, to serve, the Lord said to me, Google the black eyed peas got a feeling. You know, that got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. So all of a sudden, I never saw that video. I'm watching it, and it's showing Hollywood, you know, walking down the street with the girls that look like street walkers. And all of a sudden, they're all like, you know, dancing. And I, start, I got up and I started dancing to it going, man, tonight's going to be a good night because we're taking back the music. We're taking back the movies. We're taking back everything for the kingdom. And you guys are too legit to quit. So now, like I'm, I'm rounded third base now. <laughs> I'm rounded, see, because it's not about the, my preaching or whatever, how good of a preacher I am. I, I'm just telling you, the Lord wanted for the record. He's giving it to us play by play. So now, it's like, I went with Bill Fowler on Friday night to a Tipping Point Hollywood thing in Fullerton. And, and we prayed for Hollywood. There was a lot of stuff that was released. But all of a sudden, the next morning, the Lord said to me, at Apostle Barnett's church on Sunday night, that's when the next two bases are coming down. I went, wow. Because I didn't know. I didn't know. You know, I don't get trying to, you know, I've got my friends, you know, Tim and Deborah here, and they live in Valencia, so they represent that north, that north gate. But this city of Bellflower, when I researched it, it was named after the Bellflower apple. I guess they had all these um, communities here that, that uh, harvested apples. Then they pushed them off over to the, you know, to the east. But this whole area here was known for producing apples. God's getting ready to bring forth the fruit. Okay. Getting ready to bring forth the fruit and bell power because of the power, the power team. It's like, so now, this is what the Lord said to me. He said the north and south base are going to be taken down tonight, which really is second base and home. And then all of a sudden this morning I woke up. This is play by play. He said, I want you to start researching Jackie Robinson. And I went, hmm, interesting. How many of you saw the movie 42? Oh, mm. Let me tell you, 42, you have to understand that when God told me to do the movie about Monty, he said, watch the movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, he will come. A guy, I'll just, a guy, Ray Kinsella, in Iowa, buys a farm, just going out in the fields, plowing, all of a sudden he hears a voice, if you build it, he will come. And all of a sudden, he has a vision of a baseball stadium, a field, in the corn, and he hears, if you build it. So he looks like crazy, he plows under his field, I'm not going to tell the whole story. Basically, the whole story had to do with his father. John Kinsella, who was a minor league baseball player but never made it to the big leagues. And all I can tell you is that the story is so symbolic of what God's getting ready to do. When he told me to start researching Jackie Robinson, as I started reading it, Jackie Robinson was born in Georgia and his mother had five children only for the father to leave. 
and the mom and the five kids moved to Pasadena in 1920. And I mean, I researched this man, I'm telling you, I'm not gonna, I'm just giving some bullet points on this because we're bringing this thing home. He, he transferred, he actually went to a community college where he actually went into some altercations with, he hated racism. He hated it with a passion. And he got into some trouble with some police because he almost felt like he had to defend. Um, he went to UCLA, this is where the UCLA and the water and, and the sports and all this stuff is coming in. He went to UCLA and actually um, in 1939 where he became the first athlete to win varsity letters in four sports. Four. So all I can tell you, he went into the World War II, he ended up getting court-martialed because when he was on a bus in the military, they told him to go to the back and he wouldn't. So what I'm trying to tell you is this man had some issues and anger over race. When, now this is interesting, you spell your name R-I-C-K-E-Y, right? For the Ricky? Okay, studying this thing, Branch Ricky, R-I-C-K-E-Y, was the club president and general manager who began to start scout, now this isn't me saying this, they used to call the leagues Negro Leagues back in, back in the day. He started scouting the Negro Leagues and he found Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson wasn't even the best player. There was other players better than him. But he chose Jackie and there was a three hour meeting where Branch Rickey ended up telling him, when Ricky asked him if he would withstand, how he would withstand the racial abuse, Robinson was aghast. He said, are you looking for a Negro who was afraid to fight back? And Ricky replied, he needed a Negro with enough guts not to fight back. Mm. See, this is the deal. It's easy to open our mouth and say all this stuff, but see, God knew what he was going through, and he knew this racial stuff, but God chose him because this man learned how to shut his mouth. And when he was being slandered, and when he was being abused, and he was being confused, he basically learned to shut his mouth. And there was a white guy named Pee Wee Reese that stood up for him and put his arm around him. I know that in the spirit I see that that's what God's going to do tonight. God's getting ready to make the wrongs right. The Civil War of this country, when Abraham Lincoln was president, who, if you ever study the life of labor, Abraham Lincoln, he lost more elections went through more challenges. God knew what he had to go through to get him ready for the greatest of time, this tr the, the greatest time of trouble that this, this world in America has ever seen. God knew that he had to get a man like that, but what kind of test did he have to go through to get there? The Civil War was between the North and the South. It was all over slavery and freedom. When the Emancipation Proclamation was decreed, free the black slaves you know, so that they become citizens. The Lord told me today that what he's going to do tonight, Apostle Barnett, is he's freeing the heavenly citizens, the citizens of this earth, so that they can be redeemed and accept heaven for the harvest, the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen, is getting ready to come to pass. William Seymour was shown by the Lord that there was a greater move of God, seven times bigger than Azusa Street that was going to hit Los Angeles a hundred years after the Azusa Street. God told me in 1996 that there was a greater wave of God coming than the Jesus movement. We're getting ready to see something that we've never seen before. But he's getting us prepared. He's getting us ready. And he's got to take down the basis. Because these principalities and powers, I never, I never heard the four quadrants. The Lord gave it to me play by play. So now, I'm coming home now. <laughs> I'm coming home. <laughs> After obtaining a commitment from Robinson to turn the other cheek to racial antagonism, Ricky signed him for $600 per month. And there's a whole lot into the story, but I'm just going to give you the bullet points. He basically started playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And this man went on to become one of the greatest players the world has ever seen. And he did more for civil rights. Martin Luther King even said that he was one of the greatest examples of a man that learned how to become a true uh, a true godly man and I'm just hearing play by play when the Lord started showing me about 42 four times two is eight this is the time of new beginnings four is home two is second base he played second base that was the, the mo most position he played he played a lot of positions but this is I'm closing now 
He died, oh, by the way, at 53. Heart issue. Died at 53. So now, this is in honor of my father. Tonight, the cloud of witnesses in heaven. The faith of our fathers. We thank you for the fathers, the faith of the fathers and the mothers, including Jill Austin, including Lonnie Frisbee, Chuck Smith, Joe Jensen, all the ones that have gone on before, Frank Bartleman, all the flags and the faith of our fathers. Uh, this is in closing, talking about my father, who it all ties in with baseball. My dad, basically at two years old, his father had gone to World War I, was gassed, came home, died. My dad, his mother, and two older sisters was raised without a father. Basically what happened at eight years old, this is where it's all tying in with the eight, he started playing baseball at Dunning Field in St. Paul, Minnesota. And as he started playing baseball, he started developing a love for the game. There's a lot about baseball. There's nine players. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. It, there's just a lot of stuff that God has talked to me about baseball. But let me tell you, my dad ended up having a man named Frank Fahey, who was a scout for the Boston Red Sox. He said my dad had one of the greatest arms that he's ever seen. My dad ended up going to St. Thomas Academy. It's a military, prestigious military academy. Then he went on to St. Thomas College, where he was drafted into the minors of the Cleveland Indians, only to have to go into the war, the Korean War. He was recruited, and he started playing baseball. And Elston Howard was his battery mate. They played, and they won 25 games to zero. When he came back from the war, even though he didn't go to the war, he, he basically entertained the troops. He felt he was too old at 25 to get back into Major League Baseball. And he started playing just around the state of Minnesota in local tournaments and things like that, only at 32 years old to break an ankle which was almost amputated and had to quit the game. Now let me tell you, how many of you are too legit to quit? Some of you have quit, but this is what's happening. 20 years goes by. My dad and mom had seven children. I'm the second oldest. My brother Jack died, my older brother. But at 52, my dad ended up getting back into the game. How many of you have quit the game only God's getting ready to get you back into play, yes. to get you back on base? At 52, my dad started playing the game. And this wasn't just softball. It was hardball baseball. My dad was a pitcher. And the Lord told me he's getting ready to pitch motion pictures. My dad pitched baseball, and he played for 30 years. And let me tell you, his batting, I don't know if any of you, I don't really understand all the averages and stuff, but he had 273 wins to 58 losses with an ERA of 2.45, meaning when he pitched every game, his average was only two and a half men and got on base. What I'm trying to say, it doesn't matter how old or how young. Now, this is where it gets. What happened with my dad, at 82, he quit. At 84 years old, St. Thomas Academy had needed a sign, a scoreboard sign. My brother had died 25 years ago, and they said, my dad said, if you put in memory of Jack Jensen on the bottom of the sign, you know, it can be any size, I'll, I'll pay for the sign. When they dedicated that scoreboard the first time, when you, when you op unveiled it, it had huge writing that from 100 yards away, you could see in memory of Jack Jensen. My dad, they needed a second sign. And all of a sudden, they unveiled the second sign and it not only had my brother's name, but it had my mom and dad's name. This was the day that he found out that he had leukemia. They call it AML, acute myeloid leukemia the day that they unveiled the second sign. The Lord told me, watch Field of Dreams again. And I remember watching, every time I watch it, I see something dis different. He ends up going, to listen to this, Ray Kinsella ends up going to find Terrence Mann, they go to a baseball game, and watching, the, all of a sudden the scoreboard says, go the distance. What God is telling you tonight, all of you, is to go the distance. It's getting ready for the power plays. And now he gave me another key, Sonny. The Brooklyn Dodgers 
ended up moving to Los Angeles in 1958. Now they're the Los Angeles Dodgers. Part of in that field of dreams is when the dad, John Kinsella, when the Brooklyn Dodgers left Brooklyn, he never forgave them. This is east-west, west-east, north-south. I'm just telling you, it is just getting bizarre. This morning, the Lord told me, the Lord wants me to finish up my dad, okay. I'm, I am almost halfway home. My dad fought the good fight. He, he tried to beat leukemia. He didn't want to die that way. I, we prayed for him, everything happened. Four months later, that summer, they inducted my dad into the Baseball Hall of Fame at St. Thomas Academy along with eight other people. But they... <laughs> but, but let me tell you, they gave it to him early because they didn't think he'd make it to the homecoming weekend in September. The end of September. The morning of the ceremony, the homecoming ceremony, my dad got up and he called my sister. He said, I want to go to the game. He goes, I want to go and get the award. My dad walked into that place. He couldn't go down the stairs, but my cousin honored him, and everyone gave my dad a standing ovation. Four days later, he slid into home plate, and he went home. Wow. October 2nd, 2012, and I was at a prayer meeting I was ready to go the next morning, and we were at the prayer meeting in Laguna Niguel, and all of a sudden we prayed for my dad, and the next minute, 20 minutes later, my sister said, Dad just went home to be the Lord. We were praying for my dad when he went to heaven, and all I can tell you this, I had a dream, and then I'm done. I had a dream in heaven that my dad, the Lonnie Frisbee movie, was premiered in heaven. I saw Jesus, I saw my brother Jack, I saw Lonnie, I saw them all there and that I saw them give my dad a standing ovation because this movie, and it's not just this movie, God's getting really ready to release the greatest movies the world has ever seen. Heaven is for real, Son of God, and God's not dead. There's three different movies that just came out that are hitting it out of the park. Now this is the real kicker, and then the Lord's gonna do this play by play because we're gonna do something. I don't even know how he's gonna do it. This is the real kicker, the field of dreams. All of a sudden, I didn't know what I'm going to do with this movie. All I can say is God said it's going to start happening fast and quick. I'm not even going to go into how I know this person, but all of a sudden, there's somebody that I had talked to a couple years ago, had my email, and emailed me out of the blue, like, I just moved to Marina Del Rey. Marina Del Rey means the harbor of the king. And so I emailed back, and I go, where do you live in Marina Del Rey? He goes, Mariner's Village. I go, I email back, I live in Mariner's Village. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I emailed back, I said, what, what street? Old Harbor Lane. I go, I live at Old Harbor Lane. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I, I go, I go he, he, gives, he, he basically said, here's my new number. So I call him, I say, where? Basically this, this was freaky. He's on the phone and he, he goes, wait a minute. He starts walking outside and he's walking down this little path I live on the water, you can see the harbor, but there's some townhouses right below us. He basically lives right in the townhouse, right to the left of me. He's walking down the path, and I'm on the phone looking down at the thing, and all of a sudden, I look, he looks up, I look down, and he's right there. <laughs> and I'm just like going, this is too weird. Of all the things to have this, this guy move right in front of me, this guy works for 20th Century Fox, he's a director. He works for Fox Studios, and basically he's producing a movie, and the producer, with he's directing a movie that just got finished in Berlin. He just came back, just moved into this place two weeks ago. Basically, he said the producer that's producing this movie produced the movie Field of Dreams. Wow. And so now, this guy is going to read the script. I mean, I don't know what God's doing, but I'm telling you it's play by play by play. And it's happening quickly. So this is the deal. We're just going to pray. Is there anybody that plays the keyboard that we could get over there on the keyboard? Or is, uh, John was going to come tonight, but John's out of town. He's in Seattle. He's in Seattle? Does anybody play the keyboard here? Okay. Well, anyway. Some what? 
Yeah, I just want I just want instrumental music. I don't really want you know. Well, if, well, anyway, we'll we'll just ask the Lord. Do you have a song? Do you have that song? Um, uh, Break every chain. You know, there is power in the name of Jesus. Do you? We have that in a CD. Do you or no? Yes. Okay. So th this is the deal. We're all gonna get up. I feel that what God's gonna do tonight. We're gonna have some. We're gonna do another commissioning. It's gonna be. You know, we're gonna commission all of you guys to go out. And I feel that what God said to do is we're all gonna get in the circle again, Apostle, and that we're gonna put our swords of the Lord up in the air, and that we're gonna turn to the north, to that base up in the north side. And Tim, because you live in the north side. You're going to shout, and then we're going to turn. This is the south base, home base. And we're going to shout it. The Lord is going to take down the last two bases. And then we're going to shout. Oh, this is something I forgot to tell you. And then, then we're, we're going to pray. And then there's going to be prophetic words over people. But I'm telling you, a lot of the guys missed out tonight. Because let me tell you, God, was in, God still loves them. But all I can tell you is God's going to do something tonight. On Tuesday night, oops, on Tuesday night, after the prayer meeting, I go to bed, I'm, I'm with my friend Sherry and stayed at her house, and the Lord said, it's time to cut the silver cord of the enemy with the sword of the Lord. And I go, what's the silver cord? I mean, I didn't, I heard it because Ecclesiastes is a silver cord, but all of a sudden, I started Googling it, and it talked about Ecclesiastes as a silver cord, but then... It has a lot of the people that ask to project. When they project, they literally see a silver cord that that's, if, they, if it breaks, they can't get back to their body. So I'm hearing people talk about the silver cord of the Lord. And then Bill Fowler texted me. So I knew that Bill and Sherry and I, we were to cut that silver cord. So Bill was on his way over to the Rose Bowl on Wednesday morning. I knew that we weren't going to do it that night. But the next morning, basically, I called Bill. Bill went to the... Pasadena, where they had a hundred year old sycamore tree under the American flag, Old oh Glory. And the Lord, in simultaneous unity, he had to say, We cut the silver cord of the enemy with the cord of the sword of the Lord. And we cut it, and Bill, stand up a minute. Bill said that in 10 years he has not felt this much freedom. He said, Well, just t tell him what happened really quick, and then, then we're going to pray. Um, let me tell you a vision that I had real quick that will explain this. Is uh, I saw a, a vision for a solid hour. I saw Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mountain of Anointing. This is almost too holy to, to speak about. But uh, I believe this audience can, can hear it and receive it. But in this vision, to see our Lord in travail birthing the church. And I saw the first... Uh, sweat, great blood drop, you know, drop of sweat, as it were, blood, the first blood of the Lamb, I uh, saw so in slow motion fall through the atmosphere for a solid hour. Wow. And uh, this is, you know, almost too holy to talk about, but I could peer into it. It looked like a comet falling through the atmosphere. And the atmosphere had never been exposed to the blood before. You know, sin began in the garden, but our redemption began in the garden. And so everything that we're discussing here tonight, it was paid for at a great price. It was the travail of our Lord. No one had ever had the spirit of travail that much, that hard. You know, this was on the mountain of anointing, the mountain of olives, Gethsemane. There's an olive grove there, and there's an olive press. And our Lord was literally pressed out. Mm -hmm. And so all of the anointing that any of us know, it comes to us from what he earthed and his blood. And what I saw in the second heavens there, you know, Satan is called the prince and the power of the air. Mm -hmm. And I saw the molecules, all of the atmosphere, the second heavens, the air was just all backing up from the blood. And it was like a holocaust all around the planet. Because this thing was like a comet. It was just as huge as a comet. I could peer into it and see the DNA wow. of Christ, the Lamb of God. It was up to infinity and beyond. 
But when it hit the ground, it grew up into a great big red, red rose, wow. the Rose of Sharon. And so when I went over to the Rose Bowl the other day to make that decree with you, Mary, and uh, we're standing in front of the only flag pole there at the Rose Bowl. And uh, we have many prayer meetings over there around the Rose Bowl to do the 11, 11, 11, a line in the sand stadium event. Many of you have heard some of those testimonies. But one night we went over there with 120 intercessors and we went to every portal, every gate of the Rose Bowl, um, you know, all the tunnels and entrances. And all of our prayers and shofar horns were like um, magnified through that stadium into the heavens. It was an open heaven and it was uh, uh, amplifying the sounds of our decrees and our prayers. But when we got to the Rose Bowl flag, that is a gate C, entry C, I prophesied that Old Glory was going to have um, its name changed. It was no longer going to be known as Old Glory because of the revivals that we're all involved in in birthing and the glory coming and being poured out to the whole earth. And I prophesied to that banner. I said, from now on, you're going to be called um, New Glory because the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former house. And so what transpired that day for to have this huge shift and all of our lives changed, and everyone I talk to, their lives are being changed. Things are accelerating. We have all kinds of signs and wonders that would take hours to speak about, but uh, this is so strategic. And uh, the vision I had of Jesus, um, his blood falling and hitting the ground, what I saw was a fire floor, a modern day fire floor. Jesus, was, this whole image was superimposed upon the Mountain of Olives. Jesus was praying, praying in a birthing position in the center of this fire floor on the top of the Mount of Olives. The fire floor was today with us. He was 2,000 years ago praying, but uh, he's outside of time in the way that he can redeem things and see the future and know what's going to happen. But all of the intercessors were in a wide circle way out around the perimeters and they were all turned to each other, Mary, two or three. And they're all discussing, like, how, how do we pray? Uh, let's, what are our strategies? Yeah, okay, we're going to, two or three gathered in my name, we're all going to pray. That was the big wide circle all around. Jesus was in the middle, and they were all focused on each other. That's all they could see was, and they were arguing over it. It's my idea, it's your idea. I'm better than you are. I'm a, I'm a greater this and that. But I was starting yelling at everybody, hey, 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 can't y'all see? All of the intercessors in the big white circle, can't you see? It's Jesus, it's Jesus, Jesus is in the middle. Jesus is in the middle of this fire floor. Jesus is the one travailing. Jesus is the one birthing. He's paying the price. Won't y'all turn from looking at each other? Won't y'all turn and face the Lamb that this is all about His uh, price he paid, his birthing, his blood, and that everything we're inheriting and receiving, our ability to deal with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places, it is not because of who we are. It's not because of anything that we have done. It's because of the Lamb, the blood. And uh, what transpires here tonight will not be done in the flesh, Mary Crowley. There will not be any parade of flesh here this evening. No one's going to get the credit or the glory for this. None of us are big enough or good enough or strong enough or spiritual enough to touch it. The intercessors, I finally got their attention on the big wide circle. I finally got their attention and I said, they said, we can't see him. We can't see what you're seeing in the middle of that mountain of anointing. How do we see it? And I said, what we do is we get on our hands and our knees. We crouch down like little children. We all face the same direction. And the wider circle started getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter as we all got down lower and lower and lower. And uh, right next to each other as we kept crawling in more and more to the center of the circle, we got into one. We became unity. We were all looking the same direction. And all of a sudden, they started shouting. And we were like little children. I see Jesus. I see Jesus. I see Jesus. Jesus is travailing. Jesus is praying. The blood is coming off of his forehead. 
It's quite in the craters for revival in all of human history. The greatest outpouring is glory of God. So this is what we're going to do. I want all the men to come up here first. All the men. Just in a line. Like. Sunny, my friend, the Lord calls her Sunny Delight, actually. <laughs> she actually brought, she brought uh, olives with her tonight. The Lord was showing me, Bill, this is play by play, that it was about the Mount of Olives. It was about the Gethsemane, you know what I mean? The, and I, 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 the Lord wants you in two lines. Like, you know, one there, one there. On both sides. Equal amounts on each side. So just face each other. But, yeah, like two teams almost. Like two lineups, you know what I mean? Yeah. Apostle at the, at the front. Uh, Bill, I want you on the other side at the front. He's... Yeah, okay. we'll have the front, on the end here. Right in front of Apostle Barnett. Just, yeah, just keep, okay. Let's, maybe we can uh, move this uh, deal. And maybe there might be some light music you can play, some really, really light music, maybe Grace Williams or something. It it's can't be really, it's gotta be more soaking up right now. Yeah. No, I just was trying to hear. So keep moving down. Okay, so one in front of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I want the same amount on each side if we can. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, Jesus, I guess, will be the, the other one. <laughs> well, here. Yeah, why don't you, you, can you, you get over there. Can you get in the line? You can do it. Yeah. Well, get, get on the other end. And he's wearing yellow. That's, okay, so now put on some really low, low music. Okay, so this is the deal. The, the Lord, you have to understand, and what Bill said wasn't him, because I know Bill, he doesn't normally yell like that. It wasn't, that was the Holy Spirit coming out of him. You know what I mean? The Lord coming out of him. The captain of the most high, the mo most, ho the holy ho captain of the host of God. Okay. So let's let's get the music going. Really light. So low. Really low.
on this tiny bed. The Lord has a word. Do I miss it? It's not good. The Lord said, lift up you head, O ye gates. Lift up your head, you everlasting doors, for the King of glory has come in. And the Lord said, even right now, the red carpet is being rolled out. And even Jesus Christ, the Lord said, the Son, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Lord said, now is walking. The Lord said, there's angels in back of you, mighty men. The Lord says, you are my mighty men of valor. I'm assigning and putting the men in place first. And so the Lord said, there's seven men on each side, which is symbolic of my covenant. 14, says God. This is the year 2014. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to put my men on base. The Lord said, get ready, men, because the Lord said he calls you mighty men of valor. And he's getting ready to release you out of the caves, out of the position as slaves. And now the Lord says you're getting ready to ride the wave. So look up, says the Lord, for he's got an anointing, an appointing that he's putting on each one of you. And the Lord said there's nobody that's going to touch you tonight because the Lord himself, Jesus, is walking down the middle. And the Lord said tonight, you're getting ready to fight this fight. Lightning just went across the sky. Because the Lord said tonight, you're the apple of my eye. And God said, this is do or die. Do or die. This is heaven's battle cry. The Lord said, this is the last end time battle and movement of the most high. The Lord said, Apostle Barnett, the Lord said, keep your eyes closed, but Jesus is standing in front of you as the general of the captain of the Lord of hosts. And the Lord said, now, God said, he's given you a spiritual sword. Raise your right hand to the Lord. The Lord said, he's putting a sword. This is a sword, says God, that has never been given in this earth before. It's this time for the appointed time this is the sword of the Lord. Bill Fowler, the Lord said, raise your right hand to the Lord. God said, even as you were in Bellflower, Bill Fowler, the Lord said, it's a bell tower. And God said, the bells of liberty are going to ring tonight in this city, in this state. And God said, I say that no longer will you wait. For now is the time that I'm going to give you estates, estates, estates. Because there's a lot at stake, at stake, at stake. So get ready, says the Lord. You, the Lord said, you put your swords together, the Lord said. The Lord said, I'm putting the white and black. The Lord said, tonight are going to break the back of the enemy. God said, you are significant, says the Lord, of what I did with a man, Jackie Robinson. The Lord said, 60 years. He broke the color line. He broke the color barrier. Get ready, says the Lord. It's time. And so now the Lord said, You now, says the Lord, together, white and black, you now, says the Lord, are going to anoint. This isn't about a long anointing service. I want you to go together. And the Lord said, The rest of the men are going to come underneath. It's almost like you're going to hold your hands. I'm doing this play by play. Put your hands up together, two hands up. Like Bill. The Lord said the rest of your men are going to file. This is where the Joel 2 armies coming in, says the Lord. File two by two. Carlos and Thomas, you're going under. The, the Lord says, I'm putting together teams. The Lord says, so go underneath. This isn't, put your hands together, Thomas. And, and then you walk underneath. The Lord said, I'm doing an appointing. Then come around to the other side. Then come around and back to the other side again and line up where you were. 
Come back to the other side and line up where you were. Line up in perfect order. And so now the Lord says, you can take your hands down now, Bill. And now the women, says God, this is what we're going to do. The women, and Sunny, says the Lord, brought some olives. That it's going to be significant when the women come through. You're the intercessors. For the most part, it's the women of this church that have birthed and labored because the delivery is at hand. So now I want the women to line up and come around over here. Move down just a tiny bit because the women have to get and move over like this way. You guys, move back. Okay, but, but, but no, stay in still in formation. Okay, so now the women, come over this way. And Sonny, you're going to have a bowl with me. We're going to give the women on the other side. Can, the Lord said, Sonny was told by the Lord to bring these olives. It's symbolic, says the Lord, of the Mount of Olives. And God said, the intercession that you have birthed for me. So now the Lord said, as yeah, you guys all, you're going to, so the men, the Lord said, this is about a long time. You're going you're to cover them. You're going to literally put your hands like up, like over. So as they walk under, the men is going to be a covering. Thank you, Lord. And Apostle Barnett, and, and, and uh, I'm with me and uh, you guys, we're going to anoint their heads with oil. And then you're going to give and have them take some olives. Okay, thank you, Lord. So, so come on through, ladies. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shh. It's meant to happen quick, just to barely touch it. Just, okay, now give them the olive as they come through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. The apostle's wife's coming through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. And so now, the Lord said, God said there's silence in heaven right now. Because the Lord said, the angels of the Lord are getting ready to infiltrate the city of angels. The Lord said, Bill, the Lord said, and Ricky, I'm calling you by your first name because God said even as Branch Ricky was the manager and the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, now the Lord said, I extend an olive branch to you, Ricky. And the Lord said, now, says God, there's a movement that is beginning, the Lord says, here, right in this place, because there's two bases that are coming down, the north and the south. Your church represents the south, which is home base. God said, I'm getting ready to establish a base of operation here in this place. And God said, I say grace, 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 grace to you. 
And the Lord said, now there's something, the lightning, that there was lightning that just struck outside in the heavenlies. God said, now the lightning of the Lord is coming down with the sword of the Lord. And even as Bill, you prophesied that this is the Lord that is the mighty man of war that's coming down on a horse with his sword. And so now the Lord said, what all of you are going to do, because this is symbolic of a team, you're all now going to get around in a circle along the perimeters, including the men. And God said, this is what I want. I'm just doing this play by play, God. It's a man, a woman. In between every man, there's going to be a woman. The Lord said, because there's no differentiation between men and women in the kingdom of God, there's neither male nor female. And so now the Lord said, Billy will be on that side and Ricky on this side. But women line up. Now the Lord said, I'm putting the women in between the men because God said, I'm doing something that's, that's new. So eat the olives, said the Lord, because this is significant of what you have done for the kingdom in intercession. So now let's, let's keep going because what you're going to do is get in the circle. And the Lord said, you're going to shout because I'm going to take down the north base and then you're going to take down the south base. And God said, it's going to be... when. So keep going around the room, you guys. We have to, I know this is difficult, but I'm hearing it play by play. So we're going to go in a circle. Just start lining up, you guys. Start going around the perimeter. And try, a man, a woman has to get between, uh, unless, you, you know, your husband and wife, you be together. But, yeah, well, there's, it's a man, then a woman, a man, then there's more women than men here. So what the Lord was saying yeah, it's just a man, a woman. If we, if we, as many as we can, we're going to try to have a man between every two women. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And we're going to go around the perimeter. Keep on going around. He wants us all to hold hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If we Keep on spreading out, you guys. Spread out. He's trying to get the ranks in order. This is what he's doing. And we have to be in one accord. And if there's more women than men, I know that's true, so okay. It's, it's as good as it gets. Keep on going. Keep on going all the way around. Keep on going all the way around. Now, do you have that song about breaking every chain? Yeah. Okay. Let's get that on. So now, I'll tell you when to put it on because I'm going to get... Oh. Don't play it until I say. Uh, Apostle Barnett, do you have a sword? Can we take that one off of there, or is that one stationary on there? Can one of the men grab that sword and give it to Apostle Barnett? I have a sword that Lord anointed. It's in my office. It is? He ran a power through. Okay, well, then get the sword of the Lord in the office. It's a real one. He ran his power And you're, you're supposed to be at the foot. You're going to be at the front here. Apostle. Yes, thank you, Lord. Okay, so now. I wish we had some drum roll or something. I'm used to having music in back of me, my own music, but that's okay. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. This is a big deal, you guys, what he did. This wasn't about really prophetic individual words. I'm going to pray over some people after, after we stop tonight, because I have some prophetic words for people. But this was so, it wasn't about individuals. This was about the team tonight. It was about the team, and that's why he's talking to you like a team. So, Pastor, you stay in the front up here. In the front, like next to, uh, in fact, no, God wants you and Bill together. Okay, that's good. God wants you and Bill, whoa. God wants you and Bill together. So now, the Lord has a charge for you before we play, play the song. I'm going to stand in the middle because I'm significant. I'm not Jesus, but he's operating through me tonight as a prophet. And so I'm standing in the middle. And even right now, everyone just lift up your hands. The Lord said, now tonight, you are a circle, and I'm in the center of this circle, Hallelujah. in the middle of the circumference of the circle. And what Bill's talked about, the vision of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, God said, the only one who's going to get any glory now for this story is Jesus. I am going to share my glory with no man or woman. And so now get ready. Tonight, the Lord said, 
I told Mary when that lightning struck the west side, it was in Marina del Rey in Venice. God said, I took down a principality, but because it was what you all did together the day before. The Lord said on Tuesday, there was 12, and I said to take down the principality over the east gate. Now tonight, says God, I showed Mary that the north gate and the south gate, the bases, the enemy has bases, and it's like a baseball diamond. It's not a square, it's a diamond. And he has the bases, the four bases. Tonight, you're going to be able to take down with the authority of Jesus Christ, who is standing in the center of this circumference circle to take down the base of the north and the south. Yes. And what you're going to do, says the Lord, is you're going to sing that song about power in the name of Jesus wow. to break every chain. And the Lord said, then I'm going to have Tim Sweeney, because you're from the north gate, you are going to, you're all going to turn to the north gate, says the Lord, and you're going to speak to that gate, and you're going to command it to fall. And then you're, you're already in the south gate, so you're going to stay then in the circle with your arms raised. You're going to command it to fall. And then you're going to shout. And the Lord says, when you shout, Apostle Barnett, I want you to take the sword of the Lord, and I want you to come in the middle of the room, and you're to twirl it, says the Lord, and it's going to be symbolic that the Lord is going to break all the chains all the, the, all the cords, the Lord said, over this city. The Lord said, I'm going to use you to break every cord over this city. And God said, each and every single one of you has something to do with this. Because without you, Apostle Barnett or Mary could not do what they do. And so now the Lord said, you're going to sing that song first. You're going to play that song and as you sing it, you're singing to the heavenly realm, the demonic strongholds. And God said, the chains are being broken. They're being broken. They're being broken. And then the Lord said, you'll, you'll turn to the north. And Tim Sweeney, the Lord said, you're going to be this one that, because you live in that community. Where did he go? Right here. Okay. <laughs> he wants you to be directly over here. You, you guys kind of move over a little bit. Tim and Deborah, get in the middle because you're exactly directly across from, from them. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Is anybody else getting a vision of some sort? There's 39 of us here, and uh, that's the limit you can beat your Hebrew slave and, uh, without killing him. And uh, Jesus took these beatings. Um, there are 39 in this uh, circle here. I counted the number of us all very significant because it's the, the limit legally that you can beat a Hebrew slave. And uh, we've reached the limits of any of us being able to take any more beatings. Yes. Oh God, you took it all. Yes. And it's in your body, your blood right now. All of the sins, every sorrow, every sickness, every disease, every guilt, it's all in you, in your blood. And you, you paid for it, the price of everything that we're receiving tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Set all the slaves free. We say this is a jubilee. Yeah. This is like the seven times the seven. The 49 that becomes in the 50th year of release, the jubilee, to return all of the inheritance, to set all the slaves free, to cancel all the debt, turn the, return the lands all back to the rightful owners. And so we just say this is going to be a great jubilee tonight. Trumpets are blowing and angels are shouting. A great cloud of witnesses is here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else get a vision or have anything briefly? It's almost like for the record, the Lord wants uh, the team to speak. Anybody, if you have it, raise your hand quickly. I just kept saying an open heaven over the place. Open heaven. And who said they saw the lightning? Who was the woman that saw the lightning? You heard the lightning. You heard the thunder. Probably she's at the, she's, oh yeah, she saw lightning. Sunny went out to get the olives. She saw the lightning. The lightning struck. And the thunder they heard. So listen, it, it hasn't rained around here in a long time. You know what I'm saying? So something is going on, clearly. Okay. So now which way is the north, you guys? This way. This way? 
Okay, so we're, Tim, when we face the north, I'm going to give you the mic. And then, you know, so we're going to do this play by play. So right now, let's turn on that, that uh, the sound, the song about break every chain. And we're singing this to the principalities over the region. And God doesn't want you to worry about what kind of backlash is going to happen. No. Because he said you're under the glory cloud of the Lord. And the Lord said the thunder and the lightning is actually coming from the heavenly realms. And God said and all the demonic forces are fleeing already. So, thank you, Lord God. There is power. Barnett, 
you're already in the south here. You're all going to grab hands, raise them in the air, and you're going to get in the middle, Apostle, and you're going to take that sword, but wait until Tim does it first. You're going to take that sword and you're going to twirl it around, the Lord said, three times. Yeah. And God said, then you're all going to shout. And God said, the first, second, third, and home base will be the base of the captain of the most high of the army of the Lord. So get ready. Now is the appointed time. So when I tell you to shout, says God, first of all, Tim, you call that base down, and then I'll count three, and then you guys all shout. And then the Lord said, Mary is still under the directive of the Holy Spirit as a prophet of the Lord that's speaking for the directors. So Tim. In the name of Jesus from the north where God lives in eternity, I release all the holiness of the Spirit of God to come through the stratosphere, to come through the atmosphere, to place on this earth, to have dominion that the Lord thy God shall rule, and he will open the scrolls of righteousness, and he shall rule and reign and pour out his spirit upon the face of this earth one last time, and it is decreed and declared that no demon will stop it, saith the Lord. I call base two to come down in the name of Jesus. Now on the count of three, everybody shout. One, two, three.
shout freedom when I tell you to and the Lord says let me tell you when you do God says I want you to know you're going to lift your hands and everything that you've been desiring God said I say now the release of the finances the release of the families the release of the futures the release says the Lord of the things that the enemy has tried to keep from you, yes. now I decree and declare over you, Isaiah 61, this will be the opening of the prison to those who are bound. The Lord said, this will be acceptable year of the Lord. And God said, I say now you'll be in position for acquisition. Yes. It's not by any prophetic word from anybody but me right now that's telling you because you did what I told you to do. Now no more delay, no more delay, no more delay. And the Lord is saying, oh, the Lord's funny. Handere, handere, handere. Woo! Fast, fast, And God said, it's getting ready. So the Lord said, even that song that I told Mary to listen to, got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. The Lord said, after you yell freedom, I want you to literally dance because the devil is under your feet. Woo! You have that song? That song about uh, oh the devil's under your feet. Okay, yeah. Can you get that ready to roll? Devil under your feet. Okay, yeah. Let's get that song. But is it ready to roll? The devil under your feet song. <laughs> They're getting it. And then after I'm gonna turn it back to you to, to close them. Okay. Thank you. So now the Lord's saying, the Lord said, this is a holy, holy ground right now. God said, it's holy because what you did for me is holy. And I purposely kept a lot of people away tonight because I wanted the remnant. Amen. I wanted the remnant. Amen. The Lord, we were each hand selected, hand picked. The Lord calls you the pick of the litter. And God said, no longer bitter. Now the Lord said, you're getting ready to go really high. And God said, you're going to be frequent flyers because many of you are going to travel around the world. The Lord said, with the, the, the apostle, you're getting ready to travel around the world. The Lord said, you're getting ready to travel. Okay, so uh, the Lord said, when we count three, you're going to yell freedom loudly and then you're going to have this dance under the feet, the, the devil song, and you're going to dance. And then, Apostle, you're going to close it out. Thank you, Lord. So, one. Do you have an Indian? Yeah, they have an Indian. Okay. Tell when you're ready. Yeah, tell us when you're ready. Because I'm going to say, one, two, three, we're going to chop freedom and then turn on that song, okay? Is there a shofar in the house? Is there a shofar in the house? Uh, hey, one. Look at that here. Does anybody have a shofar in the back? Well, we'll just be the shofar. Yeah, we'll just go. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm getting one. Okay. Well, are they are they still trying to find the song? No, I, oh, so we command that song in Jesus' name to play. Yeah, we say, devil, you're not going to stop that song from playing because you're under our feet. Yeah. Yeah. And we already did beat you because yeah. we have seated you. And so, Lord, we thank you that the blood of Jesus over everybody in here, no backlash, no repercussion of the enemy. We say no. We thank you that the Lord has sealed us all into the blood of Jesus and it broke every chain. Yes. So we thank you, God, for that in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that that song is going to play in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All show
Just pray, you guys, in the spirit. Everyone just pray in the spirit. Anybody can see anything in the spirit? Anybody, if, if people have some vision, they're just getting it, we're going to say the freedom. But God wants everyone to have a voice if you have one. Really quick, anybody have something? What, what is it? When we begin to pray, the Holy Spirit was showing me that the power of God is moving. I'm from Kentucky, and there's a horse that was there a long time ago. Secretariat, and there's never been another horse like this horse. Right. It looked like a regular horse, but when Secretariat died, they said that he had a, it had a heart in it three times, seven times its amount, and there's never been a horse race like that. Well, what God was showing me that the people of the house tonight and the move of God that He's moving, that there's going to be a power and a force that's going to be reckoned with, and that's and He began to show me. That even when we just like walk into a room, that things just atmosphere and everything and start changing. Yeah. You might go to the hospital, go pray for somebody, but all of a sudden the whole ward and everything is going to start changing our life, and it's going to be so quick to us that we're not even going to hardly understand it. But we're not to lean on our own understanding, but yeah. trust in Him. Amen. 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 Okay. Who else has something? Did you guys get it? Yeah. Okay, okay, so now, we're gonna, when I count to three, we're gonna no. yell, freedom! What? Okay, we're waiting for your daughter? No. For who? Bishop. Oh, Bishop, okay, right. No. Apostle, okay. No. There he is. Okay, so when I count three, we're gonna yell, freedom, and then we're gonna do the song, we're gonna dance, and then Apostle's gonna close out the, the meeting. Okay, so one, two, three. Freedom!
the Lord used her to speak to me. I'm very proud. I felt the anointing when I was cutting. Well, I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Get you out of here. We're going to take up a great offering tonight. And I want to the Lord to take one offering up to the both of the ministries. And I'm challenging, I'm challenging people to give $100 tonight. Ten. I want to know those ten. When I touch your hand, we'll give them a hundred. I challenge there's twenty to give fifty dollars. And we ask whatever you can give, twenty, ten, whatever. Uh, would you come before me? I'm an anointing. I'm praying for a seven day blessing for you. Sometimes blessing is not always money, okay? Do that right. A uh, blessing could be a phone call from somebody. It could be um, a letter through the mail, a door opening up, a release of finances, relations healed. Mm -hmm. I'm just anointing, and I'll be praying for something to happen for you in seven days at this point. We want to make sure the woman of God gets blessed tonight. Give another hand praise. Amen. Remember, salvation is free, but ministry costs money. Keep it real. Amen. So those who lay it on your lineup, I want to bless you. I'm in this anointing when I turn it around. And we're going to I want to touch everybody's hand to come to the offering. Oh, man. Go get the... You got the... And we use the lineup. I don't do it like that because I want to touch everybody's hands. I want to, this is a truth ration floor. Amen. Amen. They're seeing angels here. They're seeing Jesus walk the floor. Amen. So I want you guys to come. Stand right here. Line up. And I challenge 10 people to give $100. So, Pastor, who do they make the check to? I'll make it out to uh, Sword of the Spirit Power Ministry. Sword of the Spirit. But they can just say Sword of the Spirit, right? Oh, yeah. Sword of the Spirit. Yeah. The Sword of the Spirit. Amen. Ten people. Are you guys line, those give you line you up? You can still line up and give. Like, yeah, if you line up and give, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just calling that out. Not just a hundred dollars. Everybody just give what you can. But those ten people, I'm calling it out in the spirit. You're gonna see something. Well, you. I touch your hands. Okay. And we we line up this way, and you come across here. This is a real threshing floor. But I can say they have seen the angels walk the floor. They might. Rest, dressing for us, right? Yeah. I'll come and lay hands up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to just start, just start coming, you guys. Yes, I'm coming. Yeah, just start coming. Come back. I just want to touch your hands. Everybody here, I want to touch your hands and release something. So, that's something. That's something. Okay. There's an anointing up on your line. Mm -hmm. Prophetic anointing can be released and never go. No, I release it upon Jesus. 
Jesus' name. You watch it. You obey the Lord. Okay? Watch what happened. In seven days, Those who obey the Lord, um, let me know. Something gonna happen. I'm taking in seven days. God is taking you deeper, Bill, in the spirit. He's teaching you something. Profound things. And I'm praying that. things you've been having on your heart. Secret prayers be answered. And the inner healing is going to come to your very soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? of heaven are opening and the Lord said literally gold is raining down because you did what you're told not just for the offering but because of what you did you are living sacrifice tonight and the Lord said and even now Mary God is saying that raise your right hand to the Lord because right now and all of you raise your right hands to the Lord because right now, the Lord said, as he's putting his hand, all of heaven's hands are reaching to you, and they're touching you. Heaven and earth are converging and merging. And God said, it's time to play ball! <laughs> the Lord said, so I'm throwing out the first ball. The Lord said, I'm throwing out the ball. Because now, says the Lord, it's getting ready. I'm getting ready to pitch motion pictures. This is the move of the fathers. And God said, my hands now, this is Malachi 4. Because you took down the four bases. Now the Lord said, I say, behold, I set before you, Los Angeles, an open door, which no man or devil can shut. And so now I speak forth over the city of angels that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to Hollywood and it's making it Hollywood. And the Frisbee movie, I'm getting ready to throw the Frisbee. It's going to come fast and people are going to catch it and they're going to ride the wave to save the slaves. So now the Lord says, open your, lift up both hands because I have scripts coming down. I have music coming down. I have businesses coming down. I've got inventions coming down. The Lord said, right now the Lord is setting forth ideas, inventions, everything, says the Lord, for this time in history that's getting ready to be released. Steve Jobs, says the Lord, had Apple computers. The Lord said, this is Bellflower that was named after, after the Bellflower Apple. So now the Lord says, I call you the apple of my eye, and now I'm getting ready to say you shall live and not die, and you're going to lay hands on the sick. You're going to see the dead raised to life. Get ready, says the Lord, because this, everything has changed. The atmosphere has shifted. The spirit of darkness has lifted. And now the Lord says, you are going to be gifted. 
by the most high God. The Lord said to each one in here, I'm putting a crown upon your head. And the Lord said, I'm crowning this town, and it's time that he's putting a new gown. And the Lord said, this is the call to the ball. The call to the ball. Because the Lord said, this is Esther's ball. Esther's ball. The spirit of Haman now has to fall. Yes. So get ready. On your mark, it said go. ABC, do, re, mi, one, two, three. Woo. The greatest show on earth yes. has been birthed. Yes. Shalom. And the Lord is seen over you, Carlos Campos. The Lord said, you're now, stand up. The Lord said, the enemy, the call that I had over you and your voice and the music and all the choice that I've given you. Now, says the Lord, I break every demonic entity that tried to stranglehold you and put you, says the Lord, in a place that you really couldn't move. The Lord said, this isn't just for him, but now it's time to groove. And the Lord says, it's a groovy, it's a groovy, it's a yes. 60s thing coming back all around. But God said, now the Lord says, I hear the new sound. And the sound over you, Campos, is abundance. I hear the sound of abundance over all of you. The Lord said, it's raining, the latter rain, the glory train. The Lord said, the refrain, get ready, because the anthems, even as they sing the national anthem at the beginning of a baseball game, the Lord said, heaven now is singing the anthem, heaven's anthem, because God said, it's now time for the stadiums to be filled all across the United States and the world with the glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So seize the moment, seize the day, seize the hour. For the devil will now have to pay you back. The Lord said, not sevenfold, a hundredfold. This is a hundredfold, a hundredfold, because you're getting ready to hit it out of the park. So get ready, says the Lord. Apostle Barnett, the Lord said, as you cast your nets, you now are going to see that you're going to have one of the greatest harvests that the world has ever yes. seen. Yes. Get ready, the Lord said. It's a dream team. Dream team. Dream team. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. We have a hand. We give you a little special team to release you. Amen. Thank you for your patience. You all have been blessed. The anointing is here. May the grace of God and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest through and abide hence now and forevermore. It will leave from this place, but never from His presence. As the Lord releases the angels to go before you, we apply the blood of Yeshua upon you. And I decree by faith that the people of God is blessed going in, yes. blessed coming out, yes. and bless and sure will take them in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen, amen, amen. Have you told somebody you love the Lord? God bless you. Amen. And also, also I have some books and stuff back there, guys. So just to let you know. And there's a special. You there's get a special. Three, you get a free book, basically. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. Okay, love you guys. Right. Right. Let me turn the mic.